Hello, I'm the Dark Master, and welcome back to the history of Mississippi. Today, we'll be discussing the colonial period in Mississippi history. Life in the New France colony of Mississippi was economically focused on the North American fur trade. The furs were successful because they were small, but yet of high value, giving many families a successful life. By 1683, well over 140 French families inhabited New France. They gathered furs by trading with the Native Americans. Speaking of the Native Americans, the French settlers often depended on indigenous people to survive the difficult New World climates. The exchange for this and furs, the French often gave them much wanted items such as metal tools and other useful items. This made life easier, though it cost the alteration or abandonment of traditional ways of life in Native Americans. The settlers also gave them less desirable goods such as alcohol and sugar, the effects of which are still around today. In Mississippi, there were, there were roughly three classes of people. There were the whites, the enslaved blacks, and the free people of color. Now, many people ignore the third group because it serves as a counterexample to the false dichotomy that our current education system describes. Um, these people could own land, property, and even own slaves themselves. Some were sent by f to France by their fathers to learn the ways of the world. The second group, the French settlers, were sent by Louis the Fourteenth to strengthen the colony. He decided to send single women aged between 15 and 30, known as the King's Daughter. They farmed the frontier and often formed families with the male settlers that were already there. At the same time, numerous indentured servants, known to France as the Ingangs, which were treated poorly throughout the colonial period, arrived. These servants were treated, to some extent, even worse than slaves, but you wouldn't know that, of course, because our education system is pretty bad. The colonies, ironically, were originally run by the Mississippi Company, renamed the Company of the West in 1717, and again renamed the Company of the West Indies in 1719. It was mildly successful, but is most known as one of the first occurrences of an economic bubble, if you believe such things exist. The government took over after this, this bubble burst. You know, very similar to a lot of other colonies that were previously used by private enterprise and then taken over by the state. It's very interesting recurrence. Now, the New France colony was divided into several administrative districts. The one which had Mississippi was called Louisiana, which itself is divided into Lower and Upper Louisiana, Basse, Louisiana, and Halle, Louisiana. They lasted until the Seven Years' War which was actually six years, eight months, four weeks, and a day, but we just usually round up when we describe it as the Seven Year War. Though here in North America, it was called the French and Indian War, which is rather interesting. Now, I won't go over the entire Seven Year War, its causes, you know, but I'll give you the option that if you want a separate video on this war, please comment down below. But basically, in an overly simplified manner, it was caused by the territorial ambitions of France and Britain, which led to the sparking of this war. On one side, you have Great Britain, the Iroquois Confederacy, Prussia, Portugal, and some states of the Holy Roman Empire. On the other side is France, 
the Abenakai Confederacy, the Holy Roman Empire states of Austria and Saxony, Russia, who dropped out later, Spain, Sweden, and the Mungai Empire in India. In the end, the British side won, thanks in no small part to a certain General Washington, which led to France losing nearly all of its colonies in the New World, minus two really small islands. As a result, the French ceded all of Louisiana and Canada east of the Mississippi to Great Britain in the Treaty of Paris. The rest of the French Empire would be sent to Spain, who would look over it from Cuba and the Mediterranean. For a while, Mississippi was part of the British's Indian Territory. Now, the British Indian Reserve is really more of a historian's term than an actual name that was given to it. For it was a large, uncolonized area that wasn't basically the 13 colonies. Basically, anything in North America that wasn't the 13 colonies was part of this. And it included numerous areas, one of which was West Florida, which was the part that included the lower third of Mississippi. Now, I'll be going over exactly how the United States gained the territory in a little bit, in the next episode, in fact. But suffice it to say, it's a rather convoluted story. So, West Florida was actually a region that included, in addition to the state of Florida, the kind of southern third of Mississippi. And during the Revolutionary War, it was attacked by the Spanish, who managed to gain it for a short bit. Of course, back in Europe, Napoleon managed to conquer Spain in a little bit called the Napoleonic Wars. Napoleon then claimed pretty much all of Spain's empire to France. However, in the exchange known as the Louisiana Purchase, the French sold all this land to the United States, and with it, the United States claimed West Florida. So anyway, the development from the territory to the United States of Mississippi shall be discussed in the next episode of The History of Mississippi.